Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So I'm Coils of Love and I just wanna say thank you to everybody who has been supporting me thus far, the new subscribers, the OG subscribers. This video here is a collaboration video with my sis Tina Marie. And um, I definitely want you guys to go and check out her channel. Also check out her vlog channel because her vlog channel is what kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for that gave me the idea for this collaboration. So it was basically her vlogging about what was going on in her life with makeup, depression, and just dealing with being a mom of three, um, being a working mom outside of the household, and then, you know, just social media as well. So in particular, the video was talking about um, makeup and being a shopaholic and how um, hoarding, basically hoarding things and stuff was just kind of taking a toll on her life. So I was like, when she was hitting these points, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is how I've been feeling. Like, I've been feeling just like what she's talking about. So the first thing is like, with the whole makeup hoarding and being a shopaholic and all of this stuff. And even with the depression, because actually the depression plays a very major role into being um, a hoarder. Honestly, I feel like the two go together because when you're depressed, you know, some people think it's this thing like you're always, um, you might have like this gloomy face or something that it has nothing to do with it a lot. It has a lot to do with your chemical imbalance inside, you know? So, um, sometimes when you're going through depression, you kind of try to find a way out of it. So sometimes what happens, and I think it happens like subconsciously, I don't even think that we actually realize we're doing that because of the depression, but you wind up like, um, throwing yourself into other things, trying to make other, trying to have something to make you happy. So sometimes it'll be food. Um, sometimes it'll be, it could be buying things like makeup. It could be having a shopping addiction for other, uh, products. It could be, um, it can be various things, but specifically hitting on the makeup and the beauty community. It's like, when I came to YouTube, I was looking for something. And then with me looking for something, I wound up finding other things that honestly interested me and uh, made me happy. So buying makeup initially was like, oh, I want to try this and I want to, um, I want to learn how to do this. Right. And then making the videos was like, um, I want to share what I'm learning with other people. And then it changed without me really realizing that it became from me wanting to try things and show things to other people in the beauty community. Something like, I need to get this new um, item that came out because I want to continue to have my subscribers be interested in what I'm showing so that they can see like the newest things because, you know, a lot of the times what you're told from a lot of people when they're telling you about like how to start a YouTube channel or how to be successful on your channel is like being up to date and keeping your viewers interested. So if you're a beauty channel, what keeps your viewers interested, especially if you're not a makeup artist or you're not a um, an expert with makeup, what's going to keep them interested is the different products that's coming out and maybe your reviews about the different products and how you use those different products. And a lot of times I feel like when we have these small channels, the smaller channels feel like we need to make sure we have the latest and the greatest because we want to keep our subscribers interested. We want to also be, you know, um, gaining new subscribers. You want to be, you know, with what's going on. You want to keep your channel up to date. So having depression and then having this YouTube channel, sometimes things kind of can become overwhelming, I think. I feel like you want to overcome your depression. You want to find something like an outlet, basically. You want to find an outlet to uh, distract you from whatever it might be that <clears throat> that's like interfering with your normal daily activities. So now you find this outlet and whatever it may be. And then you wind up like uh, becoming maybe obsessed with it or just like overindulging in it. And I kind of felt like that. I really did. Um, and the reason why I speak in the past tense is because during my hiatus that I took, like I said, it wasn't only because, because of my moving, but also I had to take a step back. Like I had to really 
analyze what was going on. Um, you start to look and at all the stuff around you, especially the makeup, specifically the makeup for me. Even at one point it was hair products and it was like so much. And I'm like, one you, reality really starts to hit you and you're like, I'm not gonna use all of that stuff. It starts to become very overwhelming because you have so much that now when it's time for you to use it, it's like, well, what do I choose? What should I use? And honestly, it would give me a headache at some time, especially when it came to the hair parks. And I'm like, wow, I got so many butters and I got so many deep conditioners. Like, what do I use? Uh, should I open up something new? Should I continue to use what I know my hair likes? And what happened? My scout wound up shouting at me like, you're irritating me and getting on my nerves with all this new stuff you're trying. And it was reacting. Um, with the makeup, it was like, it's like you see all this stuff surrounding you and you're like, I don't know what eyeshadow palette to choose from. You have like 50 of them and there's so many similar colors and hmm, and it becomes this big headache. It's like you're battling yourself and it didn't start out that way. My collection didn't start out as a battle. It started out as fun. Like, oh, I want to try this. Oh, this has colors I like. Oh, this is something I want to try. Then it became, oh, I need this first because I need to put my video out first because then I'll have the first video out and I'll have all these views or uh, my video will be like more popular and things like this. Ha I, it happens subconsciously because you don't sit there thinking it. I mean, sometimes it may happen that you do actually think that way. But for me, it wasn't me thinking, oh, I can't wait to have my video out first. I just would be like, oh, this is coming out. I want it. And then I'll go and get it. And I'll be like, oh, I can't wait to record my video. And it winds up becoming overwhelming with that. Like, you're buying all of this stuff. You basically can't even use all of it. Like, a lot of the times I think that we forget that these makeup companies bring out a lot of these products now because they see it's not just makeup artists that are using it. Now they see they have a lot of makeup enthusiasts out there and they're kind of um, exploiting that. So now that they see how they can grab our attention and our money at the same time, it's like, oh, we're going to, I mean, how many patterns do we have that have red, orange, brown, cool and warm in it? Almost all of them. There's no color that is so new that we haven't even heard of it like it's new to the spectrum no it's not at all i mean i can look at so many different palettes and be like oh my gosh i feel like i have that um when i got my juvia place palettes i was so and this that's because i'm it's right here is why i bring it up i'm looking at them and i'm like i was so excited to get it because the colors were they were uh, different colors. They were brighter colors. Something different that a lot of companies weren't doing at a point in time. And they were great quality. Now it's like every palette has all of these different colors. Every palette is a rainbow. Every palette is a unicorn. And I, you just start to look like everything is unicorn. Everything is holographic. Um, it's just, it became... When you, when you take a step back and you're not watching videos and you're not purchasing stuff, you're just like... Why does everything look the same? Why is everything still like if I pick up a palette right now, you know, like right now I have my um this naked urban decay heat palette, right? And then I can go over here and pick up palettes that have these similar colors in them from like the Morphe palette has a lot of those browns. This is not an exact dupe for it or anything like that. But what I'm saying is you can find so many similar colors in all of these eyeshadow palettes and it's not even just eyeshadow palettes highlighters like how many different shades of gold you know i mean you probably could make a whole bunch of different shades of gold but how many do you need how many are you going to use and that's what i started to really think about like i'm not going to be using all of these glow kits or i'm not going to be using all of these different highlighters like i'm looking right now i got maybe eight in this drawer and it became ridiculous not only that but your pockets is on E. Like you're you're sitting up here. For me personally, I would be like, okay, all the bills is paid and everything that's necessary, that's a priority, is taken care of, right? So rent, lights, uh, cable, cell phone, um, kids' clothes, all that stuff is taken care of. Food and everything, right? Now I have this extra money, or I'll call it extra money because it doesn't need to be put to anything, right? And it's like let's say two, three hundred dollars. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to use that whole thing for for shopping, right? 
but I can find a reason to take maybe a hundred, a hundred and fifty dollars and buy something makeup wise. And I'm like, so I'm going to do this every single time. Every single time I have an excess amount of money, I'm looking at a new makeup item or I'm trying to find a, a, a product to spend it on makeup wise. And I'm like, wow, this is it's insane. Even with like the lippy products, you, you have all of these plastic cubbies filled with all of this lipstick. And I, I mean, I have these, these, these lips right here, these two, I'm two. I have these two. Who's going to use all of them? I done thrown out at least maybe 15 eyeshadow palettes, lippies. I mean, drawers of them I, I had to throw out. I probably still need to throw out some because I've had some for years and haven't even really touched it except maybe to swatch it and used it maybe two or three times and then closed it back up and stuffed it in a drawer. And now that I don't see it, it doesn't get used. So I felt like all of this stuff was surrounding me and overwhelmed by it. And it wasn't fun no more. It stopped being fun and it kind of felt like, even with my YouTube channel, like a competition. Every time you see a video, it'll be about the newest thing that came out. Like currently the Rihanna stuff is like going crazy. And I wanted to do a video just showing my color match, but I'm so afraid to put it out there. And I mean, I'm afraid that it's going to be like someone else's video, that it's unnecessary because you have maybe... 800 videos talking about the Rihanna uh, Fenty beauty line and right now her galaxy collection is out So now you're gonna have a million videos flooded in YouTube with that everyone is doing the same thing And that's why it became a race It became a race because people are trying to be the first one to put it out because you don't want to get lost in the mix Of all the 800 other videos that's out there or the 799 other videos that's out there and it became it became a, a task that wasn't fun and that's not personally my channel I didn't want to become that way and I felt like that's what happened so I fell back you know uh, I'm not purchasing every single palette that comes out there's tons of different palettes that have came out that I'm really interested in purchasing um, currently I'm really interested like what I've been doing is I'll see something I'll look at it a couple of times um, I have wanted to purchase the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette um, after I had seen reviews. Uh, I mean, not reviews, excuse me, after I seen pictures on it, right? And then after I seen the reviews, I was like, okay, I'm definitely not getting it because the reviews weren't great. And then the prison palette came out and I said, I love the different colors because the colors were different. I didn't love it because the colors were something that I'm... Uh, I'm drawn to I loved it because well I liked it let me say that I liked it because I seen the colors were different and it was like wow it's not too many palettes that have these particular colors in them but can I look at all of my many different palettes and find probably one in each of them I probably could I probably could look in a lot of my palettes and see that so now I have to think well what do I want it for and uh, am I gonna get how many uses do I really believe I'm gonna get out of it now the prism palette I feel like I can get a lot of uses out of it. I see artistically where I want to go with that palette and why I want it. Um, there are certain palettes that I'm like, oh, I love the warm tones, but I don't need it. I bet you I have at least eight palettes with warm tones in it, if not more. So I'm um, not even... No. Mm -mm. Uh, same things with highlighters. Like the same thing with the highlighters. It's like, okay... Right now, MAC is coming out this snowball collection, right? And I'm really, really interested in getting the Whisper of Guilt. Um, one being because the one I have came out in the holiday um, collection from maybe two years ago. And how I got it was through a makeup group. But I want it because I want to purchase it on my own from MAC, just for my own personal reasons. Um, not really because I want it because I want to show it off or because of anything vain like that. Mine is more so because I really want to see my whisper of guilt that I got from somebody in a makeup group versus the one that Mac, I know is coming from Mac. That's kind of my reasoning for that. Uh, yeah, I'm funny that way. I'm really funny that way. It just made, I want to know, did I get the real thing? I can go in and swatch it and all of that good stuff. I could do that, but I also love the packaging on it. So that's the only thing I want. I don't need everything from the whole collection that they're um, dropping. And then... Um, 
there's like the lippy cases, the uh, the thing I had bought from Lorac that came with all those lipsticks in it. I wound up selling a lot of them. The ones that I do have, um, I picked the ones I'm going to use and then the other ones are just sitting there. So MAC just released, that is a part of their collection as well, like the mini lipsticks of their most popular lipsticks or whatever like that. I don't need all of those. It's, it's not even necessary. I have so many. It is ridiculous. I'm going to actually uh, put a clip in to show you guys basically my whole collection of items and just going over some things just to show you guys like it can get crazy and the whole point in this is like it might be somebody else out there that's having that same issue where they're feeling so overwhelmed with something with something I don't know it could be makeup it could be food it could be they're just overindulging in it and you just have to sometimes step back and step away from it leave it alone literally just leave it alone don't even touch it I don't care what it is and how great it is I mean unless it's health reasons or whatever the case is but take a step back leave it alone leave it alone for like 30 days and see just how interested you are in it after those 30 days like I've seen a lot of the things that I have that I'm not even touching no more because I'm not even interested in it so it goes to show you like I was interested in when I first seen it it's that that thing that happens when you're a kid and you want something so much you just have to have it and then once you get it you play with it for a little while and then you toss it to the side we used to do that all the time with our uh christmas gifts and things like that we would want it want it want it want it play it for a little while and then on to the next thing and that's kind of how i felt with my makeup collection like i really really wanted the items i have but then somewhere along the lines I just toss it to the side, waiting for the next thing to come out so I can go ahead and get that and be so excited and anxious for it and then toss that to the side. And it's it's a whole cycle. And I'm glad to say for myself, I have been able to step back and analyze what I'm going to, uh, what I need, what I want, what I actually have the money to be splurging on. Because like I said, it's like, then you're broke and you don't have... You want to go out or you want to do something with the kids and you're like oh my gosh I just spent all the extra money because I wanted to I had it and instead of me thinking like let me hold it put it to the side put some in savings or something or whatever I'm gonna do with it instead of spending it I didn't do that and that's not a good thing so that's another thing that um I really like about not just jumping the gun and going out there and buying a whole bunch of items just because but you really have to watch it I feel like being on being on YouTube, it, it, where we at right now? Yeah, 17. Okay. Being on YouTube and having a YouTube channel, that's why I, I look for other content that I could bring. But sometimes there's really not much that I like to really talk about that I want to share with a lot of people. And makeup was one of them that I really did. Even here, that was another thing I really wanted to share with a lot of people. I felt like it's a, it was a common um, interest that I had and I knew a lot of other people had and I just wanted to share with other people but um when it becomes a contest and it's like everyone is putting out the same thing everybody's doing twist tutorials everybody's doing crochet braid tutorials everybody is doing the same thing it just becomes so freaking boring for real for real for real it just like I have specific people I will watch for specific reasons. Like if I want to know how a product is going to work, I'm going to look for these particular people to put out a video about it. I'm not even trying to see the other 750 other videos that's, that's out there because they're all the same. But I'm going to stick with, and this is kind of where um, my thing happened with this fake support where everyone is wanting everybody to support them or because they watch, because you watch my video, I have to necessarily watch yours. No, I know why I came here. And a lot of the whole point in YouTube with people coming here for things they were looking to learn and what their interest, not because, oh, I watched your video and um, now you have to watch mine. That's not why people started channels, but now it is. That's the reason now. Like, oh, okay, I know I watch like a hundred people. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go make me a channel, and those same hundred people must come and like and comment on mine while I'm not subscribing to them. That's whack. And that's what YouTube has become. It's like this competition with, oh, you like my video. I mean, I liked your video, so now you have to come like mine. I watched yours and shared it, so I'm expecting you to do the same. Or if you don't do that, then you're not supporting. 
I mean, if your content is not my interest, I should not feel guilty to have to watch your video just because, oh, um, I liked one of your videos and now you and I, we share this, um, this communication or whatever. So now I feel obligated. I got to watch all your other videos because you'll more than likely say something about, oh, people don't want to watch my videos and I watch all it is. Like it shouldn't be that way. No one should have to feel like obligated to watch your video, bruh. Like <laughs> it's, it, this is so for real. Like if I want to watch it, I'm going to watch it. If I like what you're bringing to the table, I'm definitely going to support you. And if for some reason, you know what, I'm not interested in your content, but I do like some of your other videos, I more than likely will come through to your channel and maybe like a whole bunch of your videos or share a whole bunch of your videos. If I don't have a comment, I just don't have a comment and I don't feel like I should be obligated. And that's kind of another thing that threw me off with the whole YouTube. I felt like people were feeling like it's this tit for tat. Oh, I watched your video, so now you gotta watch mine. Oh, I left a comment on 10 of your videos, so how come you only liked and looked at and left a comment on one of my videos? It's not about that and that's why I had to fall back because I'm not about to have to watch content that I'm not interested in. Like I've said before, I don't like vlogs. I'm not into the whole people staring into a camera, looking at themselves kind of thing or talking in a third person about themselves constantly. Like that's not interesting to me. I like vlogs to be honest that people are going places. Even if I was watching someone else and they were saying the same thing, like you don't have to talk about what you're doing. Just do it and take us with you. That's a vlog. You telling us and giving us basically like a, uh, an itinerary of what you're doing is not a vlog. Maybe if you're like, okay, we're going to go to the mall. Okay, but don't tell me we're going to go to the mall. We're going to hit these three, three stores. I don't want to know that. I want to go along with you like I'm walking right next to you kind of thing, you know? And that's why I don't really mess with too many vlogs. I'm not into it. I don't. Uh, I'm not into people's lives like that either. Now, if you go on a trip and you go in places and you go on a different thing, you know, going to see different sites, I love that kind of stuff. Uh, home decor, I like that too. Sometimes it depends. Sometimes it's way too expensive and extravagant. And I'm like, that's not reality for me. Sometimes I could watch some of it. It just depends on how I feel that person is trying to come across. Some people come across as like bragging and trying to show off. I won't watch it. Um... Then you have, even with some poor videos, like sometimes I won't even watch those because sometimes I feel like some people are coming from this place, like they went to the store and then five minutes later they had to make a video about it because they just wanted to show it off before I guess everybody else got it. I don't know. I'm weird that way and sometimes I just won't, I just won't, I just won't watch it. But um, at the end of the day, I want you to take from this video that... If you do have a YouTube channel, you don't need to feel in competition with anyone and don't allow the, uh, the other, um, content creators that are in the YouTube universe. Don't let what they're doing affect what you're doing. Um, I know that's the hardest thing because it happens to all of us, it happens to me that sometimes you see what other people are doing and it affects you. Don't let that affect what you're doing. If anything, let it make what you do better. Let it affect you in a good way, not a negative way. Don't let it uh, stop you from doing what you'd like to do. And that's what I kind of needed to take my break and realize, like, if this is what I like to do, doing makeup tutorials of my own, then that's just what I'm going to do. Or makeup of the day, that, if that's what I like, that's what I'm going to do. Whether I get 20, 20, 100 views or two views and one comment or no comments, I'm just going to do what I like. Um, also, if you don't have a channel and you just find things becoming, uh, overwhelming, you find yourself hoarding onto things or you find yourself depressed, the first thing that I am definitely an advocate for is reaching out to a professional, whether it's a therapist, a psychiatrist, your primary care physician, um, a social worker or whoever it is, I feel like you should reach out to someone who's a professional in a human services area that can uh, give you educated advice, knowledgeable advice, advice that actually will help you where you're having your issues at. Don't just think um, you're alone, you know, reach out to someone else because you'd be surprised just how many people are going through what you're going through and um, find support in whatever it is that you're having an issue with, find support. And um, that is it.
definitely go and check out my sis Tina Marie. Check out, like I said, her vlog channel where she's getting um, down and digging into her personal life. I love her vlog channel. She shows her children. She She's more like, I like her vlogs because she's down to earth and she's she comes to you in her most naturalist form. You know, she comes as vulnerable as it gets. So I really do enjoy her um, her YouTube channel and um, I definitely would like to say, yeah, go and check her out and show her some support if that's what you're interested in. You know, check out her videos. Don't just go there and subscribe to her because I'm saying it, but check out her videos and see if her content is something that you guys would like, if it's something that, you know, that uh, uh, draws you in. So on that note, I'm going to say I will see you in my next video. And um, let me know in the comments if there's anything like specific that I can bring to you guys. And if you guys would be interested in seeing the color match, because that's what I really wanted to get on with, um, with the foundation I picked up, just to show you guys the color match and things like that. And um, yeah, that's it. So I guess I'll see you guys in my next video. And it feels good to be back and it feels good to get that off my chest. Bye.